All right, so this is my 1985 Coleman pop-up camper, and I'm in the middle of a roof restoration, and the whiffle tree went bad. Prior to this, I'd never heard of a whiffle tree, but now I have to fix it. So, let me show you what's going on here. We have your crank assembly, and around it, I have driven, drawn a poorly drawn sprocket, which is attached to it. And then you have a chain drive from your crank handle down to your actual whiffle tree where your lift assembly actually is. There is another sprocket on this side that connects and goes straight back the shaft to the actual whiffle tree. So you crank here, it chain drives down to the center, lifts up the roof, and then you take this and hook it and it stays in place. Now, let me roll under there and show you the whiffle tree. Ugh. All right, so this is your actual whiffle tree. You have a spreader bar here where your four wires come in. They go around pulleys in the back and come out forward. So this is basically like a big piece of all thread and my nut inside of here stripped and this thing dropped all at once and almost decapitated me. So I'm going to remove this assembly. I'm going to leave the spreader bar here, cut this out, remove it, put an eye bolt through here and run a piece of pipe through the frame here and put a crank assembly on the front outside. So, let's look at our options here. As many fixes do, we made a trip to Harbor Freight. So, I picked up these two trailer tongue jacks, and they both have their benefits and drawbacks. Now, the first one is a standard, you know, like what you'd have on the front of your trailer. The pluses is that it has a ratchet mechanism on it. So, when you crank it and stop cranking, it stops. It is then locked in place. Every tooth it ratchets and it locks in place. Now this is a 1,000 pound. The drawback is it's only 1,000 pound and the rotating handle is up and down. So it would have to go out here on the side like in order to rotate your handle or it would have to be turned 180 or not 180 have to be turned 90 degrees to be mounted which is still feasible which might happen we might mount it like that we shall see so the other option is this larger 2,000 pound one that is a worm gear drive now this one cranks much slower, but it's much more controlled, but on the downfall, there is no stopping mechanism. So when you stop cranking and holding the lever, when you let go, the weight force is then wanting to uncrank what you just did, which it isn't a big deal. You know, even on the factory assembly, you just have a catch hook. Once it's raised, you flip the hook. And that's what actually holds it up. No ratcheting mechanism in this that actually locks it in place. So the pluses is that it's a top mounted handle, but the minus is if we mount it either one of them in the center, which would be the easiest option and cleanest, then you take up the spot for the propane tank. The other downfall is I wanted to add a small water tank over here. So my original plan was to move the propane tank to one side and put a small water tank on. So I want to keep this area as clean as possible. So like I said, here's what's going on in a diagram. Here's your tires, your axles, the front of the camper. So you have your crank assembly here. 
that you actually crank and there's a chain drive down to the center wiffle tree and you have 20 inches of pull on that piece of all thread the wiffle tree so the crank assembly only has to pull 20 inches so like I was saying take that spreader bar bracket punch out the center with a drill half inch drill bit replace it with an eye bolt hook your crank assembly to it and crank it up and down so now we got to get the old one out and then I'm going to figure out exactly what I'm going to do all right so first order of business getting the old one out of the way All right, you can see the camper is up, sitting under its own weight on the new wiffle tree. So, it's no longer a wiffle tree. I replaced it with the Harbor Freight 2,000 pound worm gear winch. And, you know, as most projects do, it gave me some grief, but if you're just doing this under a stock camper, you shouldn't have any grief just doing this. Uh, my grief came in because I added 150 pounds of weight to the roof and caused me a lot of problems. They are apparently built heavier in the 90s. But anyway, so this is where my propane tank originally sat. I'm going to relocate the propane tank over there. Another project for another day. But I had to add this piece of angle iron in here that was originally not here. I just put it on a plate in between the two original pieces of angle iron which the propane tank sat on and factory that was all those two pieces of angle iron were fours to hold the propane tank now i added roughly 150 pounds of weight to mine it did lift on these two fine but you could see them flexing that's why i added the third piece of angle iron welded in here 
but uh, if you're just doing this under a normal roof you shouldn't have any trouble like I said I added 150 pounds of weight to my roof between wood and aluminum so it is sitting there on its own weight I'm going to put a wire to loop over the handle here down to the frame so it cannot unspool while under load but it's actually sitting there right now with nothing holding it except the you know mechanical advantage of the worm gear drive so I'll go ahead and show you what I did underneath here and I can't show you everything by itself because it's all closed back up but I can show you what I did So, once I remove the old whiffle tree, you can see I ran the wire right through the factory holes where the old whiffle tree used to go. And I have put the guard back on so you can't see the actual whiffle tree attachment now. So, I made a drawing for you. Now, my problem come in not problem problem just didn't know what to expect there's approximately 24 inches between the two frame rails that the whiffle tree functions between and out of that 24 inches it cranked between that stopper nut and that end there which comes out to a 20 inch pull so I need 20 inches of pull on that whiffle tree to make the roof fully extend and there's only 24 inches in there so my original idea was once I got the old whiffle tree removed put an eye bolt through the spreader block and here's my pretty drawing so picture here is your front frame rail here is your rear frame rail and here's your four individual wires coming in from the corners you know, uh, front corner, front corner, and then pulley rear corner, pulley rear corner. But they all bring it to this central point where the spreader bar sits. So, my idea was that, you know, you got four eye bolts holding your four wires coming in from your four corners. And this is what I originally did. I hooked it up, cranked it and this is to scale there's 24 inches between these two frame rails so by the time that i ran the wire picture this blue line as your metal wire coming back in and i looped it up through and put a cable clamp on it the eye bolt added two inches and the cable clamp and loop added an inch and a half two inches so when i cranked it it hit about right there and I could only get about 16 inches of pull out of it which did not even come close to fully extending it you need the full 20 inches so I had to scrap that idea and make it so nothing stuck out of the front of this uh, splitter block like it was factory you know it was factory just on that worm gear and screwed so it had nothing sticking out so I took my wire, hold on here, I'm tangled, and excuse the cable, but I pulled my cable through the hole. That hole was absurdly big because I didn't want to put a kink in my wire, but uh, simply pulled the wire through, put a big half inch grade 8 flat washer on the back, and then put a cable clamp on it so it couldn't pull through. And that gave me, so there was nothing sticking out except the wire that actually pulled the assembly. So then once that was resolved, then it could then make the full 20 inch pull with nothing sticking out. You know, the wire went straight into the hole and the splitter block will pull right up tight to the frame. So it worked out very well. So for the cost of a Harbor Freight, I think it was $35 hand crank winch. Uh, 
two cable clamps, some old bed frame angle iron. I have replaced the whiffle tree. I had the piece of plate steel laying around. You know, a piece of plate steel is pretty easy to come by. And I will have to weld in a new spot over here for my propane tank to sit on, but that's no big deal. You know, I'll just weld another flat plate right across the top of there. But yeah, so if you're having grief with your whiffle tree and need to get rid of it, fix it, what have you, there's an easy way for the cost of $40 to replace it with a hand crank. Thank you for watching.